Katie Stepp and I am the Senior Education Officer out here at the beautiful Western Plains Zoo. And this week I've been really lucky to be working on a Google expedition, my first ever. And today I'm going to give you my top five tips to creating and planning your own expedition. Think really carefully about your theme or topic. What do people already know about the topic or what do you want them to know? When I was thinking about the zoo context, I went and actually chatted to a lot of the keepers and our research scientists. And I said to them, what do you want kids to know about this topic? What do you think they already know about animals? And what would you like to, them to know about animals and their behavior and interactions? Tip number two is research. So when you're researching, I would suggest, obviously there's Google, but more importantly, go and talk to experts on the topic. So I actually went and had a chat to keepers and got some of their thoughts and their ideas, what they would like kids to see. Number three that I would suggest to you guys is actually creating a table and having some columns to plan your shot. So have your shot, then think about the staging of your shot. So what angle do you want to have the camera at? Do you want to be aerial? Do you want to be on the ground looking straight on? And this is the big point, the exciting point of Google Expedition is you can have four points of interest. So that's kind of exploring the photo or the 360 that you've created that you want to direct people to. And think outside the square. So start thinking about how can you engage all of their senses. With this Google Expedition, you can actually also include audio and still images. So once you've got your audience's um, interest with the 360, how do you want to take them that step further? And how can you do that through the medium of still photography um, and perhaps audio? Number four is have backups. So what we found, found throughout our process is we planned these shots and they didn't always come off as we expected or the shots that we thought weren't going to work actually worked really well. So for example, we went out to do the lions this morning and we thought, you know, the lions are going to come out and get the meat and we're going to be able to get them up really close. But working with something like an animal or something that's moving, you can't always plan what's going to do. So it didn't exactly work out how we were expecting it to, but we worked on a backup plan. And that backup plan was going out and looking at the Australian animals and doing a completely different perspective. So be accepting, it's okay to try something and it not actually work out. You might come up with a better idea or be able to do something completely different. Number five is get together with a buddy and actually chat through your plan with them and question them is, you know, ask them, how is this going to work? What are you picturing happening for this? Um, why have you done it this way? Because it can really get you to think and reevaluate what you're going to do and improve your, the product that you end up with. So feedback is everything and don't be afraid to get that feedback because it's going to help you create a really awesome expedition. Thanks guys. Yep. All right. So, welcome. I'm going to share some tips and tricks with shooting with 360 cameras. In both our STEM share kits of the secondary VR and the primary VR, you'll find the Ricoh Theta 5. The Ricoh Theta 5 is the easiest camera to use to create 360 footage, both video and photo. You'll find that it has one lens on each side and it, it stitches the photo, which means that you have to be mindful of both where the sun and your subject is. So tip number one, mind the stitch and mind the sun. You do not want to place your subject in that stitch line in between. You'd want the sun normally there. Next tip, placement is key. You want to think of who your audience is, what your typical audience height is, and place the camera where you think would be the best vantage point for that audience member. And in thinking about that, you want, of course, not just a scenic vista, you want to think also what's on your sides and what's behind you. Because as it says, 360 footage is everything. It creates a photo bubble around you. Tip number three, get in close. Shots that normally work well in 360 are shots that have 
are close, your subject is close, it might be in a small room, or it could be a busy photo. Things that don't normally work on a 2D traditional camera. The viewer in the middle of the action or the viewer in the middle of the scene are great for 360 cameras. So make sure to get in close and bring your subjects in nice and tight. Tip number four when shooting with 360 is learn to hide. You'll obviously be standing out like a sore thumb if you take the shot while you're right there, especially with the theater and these because they have a great way of making your nose look bigger. Thanks guys, I hope you've really enjoyed our tips today and you're excited about creating your own expedition. You now have some more tips on shooting with 360 and I want to say thank you, Seth, for being such amazing hosts. You've taken us behind the scenes here and we've seen and experienced amazing things here at the zoo. But I want to say a big thank you to Steph and the people and crew here at Taronga Western Plains Zoo. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>